Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Jukalo, and today we'll be continuing our series The Voyage. And The Voyage is a series where I utilize principles from Mr. Jamvad's book The Art of Competitive Pokemon to enhance my gameplay and also enhance me as a person too. But this is going to be in the current VGC format which is Regulation D as of right now. And we're going to be using a new team that I've been working on that's undergoing quite some changes. Most notably, we have Earthquake on our Landorus and we have Taunt on our Fluttermane, which you really don't see too often, so it's pretty cool. But other than that, I do want to give you guys a quick update on where I've been, because it's, it's been a bit since I've last uploaded. And then right after that, I just want to share a few principles that we'll be utilizing in the book uh, in our battles. So with that said, I'll see you on the other side. As you may or may not be aware, it's been roughly a month and a half since our last episode of The Voyage, and during that time, I was facing difficulties in my life that made it difficult to continue uploading, um, especially at the level of quality that I desire for this channel to uphold upon its inception. Because of that, I decided it would be best to get my reality in order before continuing my work on this channel, and I'm honestly glad that I made that choice, because it just helped me to, you know, be able to produce the way I originally intended without cutting any corners and just being able to give my all again. But during that time, I achieved rank 55 on the ladder and I'll put it somewhere up here. And uh, it's just five ranks short actually of my goal of this to get of this uh, of this current meta. But regardless, I'm still glad and pleased with the results. Um, we will continue aiming for top 10, but time time is short because the DLC drops 11 days from now. So if the new Pokemon are introduced into the meta, we'll have another very drastic shift in a very short time span. But um, the goal was to get top 50 this meta, so you know we've got work to do. Now that we're both uh, up to date though, let me show you the team I'll be using. Okay guys, so this is the team we'll be using these six that you see right here but before I really break down that team I want to kind of give you the foundation of how this team came to be and um, this the intention behind it so it started right here with this team and I wanted three things out of this this uh, this is kind of why I made what I want out of the team I wanted tailwind I wanted a, a bulky poke I wanted bulky tailwind I wanted a Pokemon in that tailwind that could set up and take hits and I wanted defensive pivots so that was the idea behind making this team initially but I, it undergoing a lot of testing and so I made a lot of changes to it as you can see we've uh, made quite a bit of changes so now we're up to present time with this team here um, the most notable changes to the team though is how I mentioned that assault vest helped out but um, the assault vest is actually there to help with my armor region DD matchup because it used to be very bad it still is kind of bad like but, but as you can see the earthquake landers helps that match up so much so much and then we have bleak wind storm torn so paired with that is very difficult for armorers to maneuver um with that's with those spread attacks and then since we're av we can take expanding force torn uh terra steel i'm not sure if this can take one but it might be able to with this bulk i need to count that actually but yeah <clears throat> then i have the taunt flutter main to shut down bulky trick room bulky well trick room is bulky but bulky uh setup like grim snarl those sorts of teams and then we also have the gold dingo too which also helps up also helps with uh those sort of teams as well but i still have my bulky tailwind as you can see pokemon are bulky uh but they can still hit pretty hard defensive switch ins now my defensive core isn't as strong as it was uh, as you saw from the first version because i had to like kind of accommodate some things so you know i had to take away from one area to add on to another area that's kind of how team building goes but um, we have fake out pressure. We have fake out to kind of buy turns with iron hands. Uh, we have the setup Pokemon and Goldingo. But um, yeah, that was the generality of what I wanted when I originally constructed that first team. And this is where we're at now with it. So again, before we get into the battles, um, I'm just going to go over a few insights from the book to help you kind of understand why I'm making some of the plays that I'm making and uh, why I may be saying some of the things I'm saying. But again, you can just go through the timestamps and you can go to the battles right now if you wish to. Otherwise, just stick around a little bit and then we'll be able to get to the battles, okay? 
In our last video, we focused on the concept, what can't we guard against? Uh, but now I want to implement another concept, which is what can't our opponent guard against? In that video, I may have been saying what uh, can't they guard against as well, but I didn't really emphasize it. But this time I want to bring the two together because it's, uh, I believe I'm at a point now where I can kind of do both at the same time in my uh, game plan constructing. But those are the two concepts that I want to bring to our awareness as we battle today. Now, I want to go over a quick overview of what those exactly mean. I'm not going to read the book verbatim today. I just want to kind of touch on it a little bit, all right? So the question, what can we guard against? Uh, it helps us identify what threats our opponents possess. And by being able to do that, we're uh, rewarded with the knowledge of what Pokemon they have that can potentially cause us a loss if we're not careful, right? So by doing that, again, we're able to utilize our team, our resources in a way where we can you know suffer the least amount of casualties as possible thus enhancing our chances of victory now the other flip side of it or the other concept is what can our opponent guard against and it's the exact same thing just put your opponent on the other side and you on the other side y'all just flip places so when you're when you ask the question what can my opponent guard against you're able to identify what you have that they can't guard against so your threats against their team and by doing that you can kind of, not kind of, you actually can see a clearer path to victory and some of the things that you need to do to their team or remove in order to heighten your chances of success. So those are the two concepts that um, we're going to be practicing again today and bringing to our awareness. And another thing real quick, doing these things gives purpose to your plays and by doing that, by having purpose behind your plays, it's helping you learn what works or why something works and why something doesn't work a whole lot faster than if you just mindlessly were clicking buttons and saying, oh, this thing's weak to that and let me do that and such and such just because this and that, but not really having purpose behind or critical thought behind what you're doing. So uh, I believe this is really valuable and the more you practice it, the easier it'll get. So with that said, I appreciate your patience. But now, let's battle. Okay, let's go ahead and search for our first opponent of the day. Okay. Also, we're not uh, where we used to be. We got some work to do. But upper 1500s ain't too bad. This is Joe's team. Let's see if they can pilot it like Joe. I do like my landers here. It kind of acts as a uh, as a stalemate, so to say. Like he only has your Shifu to really hit it without suffering too much, and then his own landers is gonna kind of be another kind of something that can kind of neutralize mine. But that's pretty much like the only two things that's in its way. So let's identify what's good into both of these. Fluttermane and. My owner Shifu to an extent, but in order to enable these, I really need that thunderous going. Uh, let's see, because we don't. If their floater main isn't specs, we don't guard well against it, or if they p play it pretty well, uh, the heat trans can be annoying. But it's heat trans really not too bad against us because we're very bulky. Uh, Spadef, I'm just about everything. So phase one, I'm gonna go. Something that can deal with this torn and that, uh. Hmm. I am running out of time. But I wanted to leave Landers for sure. It's kind of on the fence about Iron Hands. Because I wanted to be able to deal with, with this lead specifically. But I also didn't want to give him an opening with, uh. With that or Shifu. Because I didn't really want to tear my Landers immediately. But that didn't even happen. So that's just. That's face what we have in front of us. I don't remember what... Oh, it's Rocky Helmet. Yeah, I remember. Okay. It's Rocky Helmet, but I don't care to fake it out right now. I'd rather just lower its speed. Um, just that we'll get damage on it. 
because the landers is intimidated. I really don't have a switch into their landers, uh, so I may just end up staying in and trying to drop or fail the uh, the thunders as he switches it. Yeah, I really want that thunders going, or at least be able to get in my Urshifu or my Flutter main before with thunder is not in. So now my Iron Hands is faster than the the train ideally. Uh, what do we want to do? Urshifu's an a safe switch unless he Terra Fairies. Does his Tran have? I don't recall if it has Terra Blast. Let's see, we can't protect. I still think going harder Shifu is an okay play, but I'm going to just U turn on his landers because I know it's AV and it won't protect on me as he switches out. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back into my landers next turn. Oh boy, let's see if it is Terra Blast. Okay, whew. He dodged a bullet on that one. Okay. Now I could. I really don't want to take that recoil from this Rocky Helmet uh, Surging Strikes. But I, I need this thing going. Let's see. He still has the landers, but nothing else can Terra. He's opened himself up to my Iron Hands so I can body press it now. Well, that's doing zero actually. Scratch that. Let's see. I'm going back to Landers, so that's a fact. We'll just fake out and go Landers here. Because I really don't want a Surging Strikes in this position. I could have faked out the Thunderous and then uh, Surging Strike the, the Frog, as, he, as he's calling it. But. It's playing a bit safe. It may not have been necessary, but we'll see. So I can see Landers coming in now for his uh for his thunder, so I'm gonna position my Yeah, I'm gonna position my Rashifu in. It's an unfortunate double miss. It wouldn't have done much, but we'll see if that mattered. <clears throat> so Surging Strikes in this slot, I mean, he can just go right back into his, uh, into his Thunderous, and I'm taking a lot. Hmm. It's like we're kind of just fighting. It's kind of like we're fighting for position right now. But I'm taking I'm taking more damage than he is in return for this uh a fighting fire positioning. This turn I'm gonna do what I probably should have done two turns ago. I'm gonna start getting strikes this heat turn because it's just getting damage off on me. And we also saw that his torn his thunders is faster than my Shifu. I mean which is expected. I could Terra uh, uh how much did Bleak Quinn do? I mean uh Wild Bolt it did thirteen. Cause I was thinking about Terra watering and getting rid of this and then drain or uh wild charging this. Cause then I could end up losing both Pokemon here in exchange for that, but the heat train is slow. Am I making a bad play here? Probably so. Let's uh just switch. Surprised you went for Thunder Wave there. I actually could have done what I was uh, trying to do. Actually, no, I couldn't have, so I would have been slowed. So we'll sack Iron Hands. Just gonna go for Rock Tomb again on Thunders. Okay. Now my Shifu is faster than his, but I can still be Thunder Waved. That did 27. That's not enough.
I still don't know what's in the back. He's playing it like it's that flutter main. Let's see, Aqua Jet Terra Water with that KO. Oh, I'm not Terra Water. But I force him here to go for, um, whatchamacallit, Thunder Wave. See, then you Wild Bolt, and then I lower your speed again. I can protect the following turn with Flutter Main. I want to do that. If it is that Flutter Main, this is going to be difficult. Which it probably is. I need my landers ideally not intimidated if I can switch it out and get it back in. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't know I'm Terra Steel. So what do you want to do here? Because you can't do anything other than Wild Bolt, so Let's see. So you what you moon blast and then just try to no but you really want my you don't want my Shifu sticking around. I need I need this going. I'm expecting a moon blast into my landers. We jet. We jet and Rock Tim can miss. I haven't teared yet, I can still tear my flutter main once this is going. We'll jet and rock to him into this slot. Oh, he switches. Yeah, I honestly, uh, not gonna lie, I oversaw that he still had this in the back. And I'm running out of time. Dazzling did 26. Did 26. I want to earthquake and protect. Uh, is that the right play? find out <clears throat> no no it's definitely not the right play and I'm about to time out dang yeah looking back there's some plays I could have done better and it would have uh it wouldn't have come this close but I totally over overlooked that thunders like I'm not the thunders the uh the heat trend that he had in the back that whole time <clears throat> and then I'll be watching this back and being like, dang, I did this when I should have done this, but I mean, that's how it goes. That's how you learn. Now, I know this team well. I'm sure most of you do. My Flutter Man having Taunt here is pretty nice. For that Amoongus. And then just stopping things from protecting in general. Like if he wants to switch in his landers or something like that. Or his Amoongus. Catch him on the switch. And he, this team struggles against Goldingo. Terra Water Goldingo that is. So my main priority is getting rid of that Iron Hands. Or at least weaken, weaken, weakening it to where... Plus two Shadow Ball can do its thing. We're getting enough chip on this Landers to where it's not taking my hits from when it terror if it terror waters. So I'm actually going to Nah, I can't leave Landers because I want to intimidate Champ Power right off the jump, but I might go the Tailwind route first. Mm, let's see, I am goggles on this. He leaves Landers, if he leaves Landers, because we don't guard well against that Chien Pao. That, that is not true. We do. We don't guard against well the, against the Flutter Main, but I do know that uh, Amoongus makes this a lot more difficult. I'm trying to see how I can put Goldingo in the driving seat to take this game home for me.
We just have to lead it. That's just what it's going to come down to. And I want Flutter Main. I want her Shifu. Okay. I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident my Iron Hands being faster than his. What am I taking more damage from this turn? Because I'm I'm nasty plotting here, 110. percent I'm taking more damage from his uh, Urshifu. So we're going to fake out the Urshifu, and I'm also stopping it here from potentially Swords dancing on me, and he can't protect me. I mean, he can't fake me out, not not protect me. Bolt switch. So either Landis or Tian Pao, which is going to force my Terra Water. Amoongus, that's very interesting. Unless you want to redirect my... No, uh... oh, he doesn't know. I mean, you wouldn't expect it anyways, but... Question, do we go for another Nasty Plot? I wonder if... I don't think Goldingo ignores Rage Powder. I don't actually know that. Yeah, I actually don't know that. Because if I can get plus four, this will really help me against his iron hands. But I can just nasty plot again. And I'll get a lot of chip on a moose, but I'm not one shotting a moose here, that's the thing. He doesn't know that I'm safety goggles though. That's gonna hurt. And he's faster than me too. I probably should have used it. I th yeah, I should have used it. Cause I, I knew that wasn't KOing. <clears throat> My Goldingo is so weak, so weak now that it's not going to be able to put in the work that I was wanting it to do. Yeah, Terra Water was 110% to play. Um, yeah, I don't really see me getting much value out of my Goldingo now. Unless it's like an end game with uh, mm, that may not be true because it, it'll help me against his Amoongus. And he's probably going to spoil that slot too, catching my switch, which would be, which would be the right play. Because when I get Goldingo and I'm, th I'm looking to just make it rain. Uh, hmm. See, so I could Drain Punch his Iron Hands, but he's just going to Pollen Puff it. I need to start getting damage on the Amoongus in hindsight. Because he's already Terrored on me. I don't remember which item this thing is holding, but it does look like citrus. Might just give him my Rashifu. Mmm. It's Amoongus, man. Unless I can, like, kind of call him not sporing this slot, then that would be nice. But he's trying to spore me. Because otherwise, I'll just go Gold Dingo. Because if it's, if it's Champau in the back and I lose this, I mean my Iron Hands is still okay, but it's very weak. Because I really need my Shifu for that, uh, whatchamacallit in the back, that Champau. Pretty sure this has protect. I'm going to drain punch just to be safe. He did 27. 
Hopefully I get enough back. I'll charge as my Shifu, then I live, get damage on this, and then I get a free switch in while he's still stuck in. I like that. But he both switched instead. I respect that. This does give me another turn to wake up though. Never mind. I'm going to force him to sucker or attack the gold dingo here because if he doesn't I get to make it rain off and then because he can't rage powder my iron hands I'm just going to drain punch the chimpo some thought provoking games that's for sure Doing it live though is definitely much more challenging I'd say because I'm when I'm actually playing I'm not saying all of what I'm saying and trying to help you guys understand what I'm doing. This isn't like, it's, it's kind of aggressive, but I mean, right now he has the momentum going for him and I need to make a, a play that will get me back in this game or give me a good chance. Because right now all he has to do is fake out and just attack. I could protect, but you know, he could just go after Iron Hands in that case. So I'm just going to go hard, uh, Fluttermane. Try to call something here. Because I'm, I need to get my momentum back in. It's, I mean, I'm not really... Like super far back, but yeah, that, this is what I was going for, but not that, not that part. But he does give me the sash off of Chimpao. But from the way it's looking, I don't know if this is doable. Because right now in his situation, you want to get rid of this, right? But you don't want to get KO'd by Goldingo, so you have to pick one. So either you go after one, or you protect and you let Iron Hands... Uh, do its thing. But they've been playing pretty well lately, so I'm I'm inclined to just go for the damage. I could get this wrong, but I mean this is pretty much the game determining uh a game determining turn here. But just based off of how they've been playing, this is the decision I'm gonna make. And we get it wrong. That sucks, but hey, it happens. Yeah, there's no way I can win this now. Even if I drain punch my way up, it wouldn't have mattered. Leaf Storm plus their drain punch. That was game. The Tailwind Roaring Moon. I, re I respect it. I definitely respect it. My Landers here is actually pretty solid. His team is way faster than mine, so I'm really not... I don't think I'm going to bother getting up my own Tailwind. Oh, let's see. The combination of Chiyu plus Fluttermane or even Iron Bundle is very, very, very oppressive. Uh, it's so oppressive that I might actually have to go Tailwind. Just so I can outspeed some of his Pokemon. Like if he were to lead these two, I gotta have to have Tailwind up. So I can do something. 
I may have Terra Water this, but that's not that's not hitting to you. I wanna go Lander so I can actually take hits with this G on the field. So it's not my tailwind up. We want Flutterman and we want our Iron Hands. Roaring Moon cannot one shot either of my Pokemon. You'd have to double up with like Bleak Wind or something to remove my Torn, but even then I might take a hit because I'm not seeing an item on this. Oh, it's Clear Amulet. I could definitely see him Dragon Dancing. I can't even do anything about it. I want to delay my Tailwind. I want to delay my Tailwind and I'm going to... Rock Tomb this Roaring Moon just to kind of keep it... Sp oh, damn, it's Clear Amulet. But it's going for breaking sweat. And we missed. I want to U-turn and protect here. And go my Iron Hands. That way everything else that comes in is kind of pressured to an extent. Oh, I should have known. Looking at the team, I should have known that's what this was. It makes sense. And we already boost energy, so I'm not even benefiting from that. <sighs> what do we want to do? Because going this route, I'm gonna have to take a bleak win, which opens, which makes my floater main weaker to what he has. But what can you do in this situation? I just take that and see how much did the, the 26 of my torn. So 26 plus one, so he'll be doing about 39 to 40. Then he has a bleak win coming my way or a taunt, one or the other. He hasn't even taunted it yet. But I can't afford to not get my own uh, tailwind up. By by going down, I mean. So I'm going to tailwind and just moonblast. Uh, I want to get rid of this roaring moon, but I really don't want his tornado sticking around. We'll just hit the roaring moon. Yeah, I figured that's what he would do. Because I want to play this to where he won't get up a, a second tailwind. Terra Fairy Moonblast might KO it. I can Rain Dance or remove the uh, the sun so my Flutter Man doesn't drop. Ooh, this thing's mad bulky. And it was Iron Head, so it didn't even matter. We are getting stomped right now. But these things happen. And it had protect too, dang. That's something. Yep, so let's see. If if I can keep if he keeps he shouldn't tailwind here, honestly, because these are slow. But let's say he does. Rain is up, so G you won't be doing as much. Uh we can't protect. I lose I lose my Landorus to the bundle for sure. He'd have the moon blaster remove my Landorus, which gives me the chance of stomping tantrum. We'll see. Depends on what plays he makes. How they want to go about this. But they haven't even teared yet, so. Yeah. Double protect. What in the heck? That's greedy. That is very greedy. But it worked out for him.
I went after the moon instead of the bundle because I knew he would do this and also I'm not KOing bundle and it's not doing much to me but yeah it's flutter main so we, we just drop pretty much taking some hits right now but we'll get those points we're, we'll get those points back it's a quick team analysis based off of the games I've been playing the first game didn't feel like there was an issue with the team um, second game I can't remember the second game I can pause yeah, there's not really an issue with the team. The second game, I made a few misplays that led to my loss. First game, same thing. And the third game, that was just a tough matchup, not gonna lie. Now that I look at it, my Tatsu Dozo matchup isn't that great either. The team can't be great against everything though. I mean, it's gonna have its weaknesses. So in my uh, breakdown of the team, I mentioned Taunt Fluttermain. It's really gonna be nice here. I'm inclined to lead or, uh, this Fluttermain Iron Hand just so I can and the off chance that he wants to leave Arcanine or Rillaboom because <clears throat> my, my Flutter made a chance to do something before they just one shot it depending on their spreads and also I'm gonna bring Landers too to opt to pressure the Volk and his, uh, his Arcanine and Rillaboom question is do we want our Shifu or Goldingo? I went Goldingo because I wanted a little bit extra help against that crest, and he did bring it. So okay, I'm actually I'm satisfied with that decision. Now the question is, will I fake out the Grum? Uh, I really don't mind screens too too much because I have my own nasty plot plus I have taunt. Uh, hmm. But if I'm going to taunt here, let's see. If I'm going to taunt here. Because the most likely one to terror here would be Grim if you want to avoid this fake out. But I want some value out of this turn. Yep, so I'm going to figure out the crest and taunt the Grim. Rocky Helmet, good to know. I hope we take and hits a whole lot better because of that, but he does know I'm taunt now, and I know he's Rocky Helmet. <sighs> so I'm looking at a spirit break from this thing. If I go for a taunt on Cress, I really don't want to deal with. I want to use this turn to get in my Goldingo. I'll let my Flutter Main take the uh, spirit break. Go oh, Sucker Punch. Wow. Now we start setting up. And in case anything wants to switch, I'm just gonna taunt the slot again. Cause I mean, why not? You just that's like your only attack, so I'm just gonna taunt. Yeah. Hey, I can go for another one. So I got light screen turns too. But I think Grim this guy I think Grim uh oh not yeah I think the taunt wears off this turn right yeah one two yeah two turns yeah so now we go for the shadow ball question is do I want to tear because if I tear this I can't tear water later on which may come in handy against his uh Volcarona if 
But I can taunt Volcarona actually, so it won't be able to like one shot me. I don't want to do that. As it is Volcarona, but again, I just said it cannot one-shot me because I'm I'm going to stop this from setting up. Uh, make it rain at 40 to Cress. Shadow Ball should get this KO. If it doesn't, then we're just wrong. But I have faith. And my faith was rewarded. did 64 uh, light screen is still up my special attackers are very in a very vulnerable position uh, this thing is cursed and we might lose I want to keep my Flutterman around It is curse. Ideally, Rock Tomb gets this KO. I mean, we do have quite the bit of uh, attack investment. I want to keep my Goldingo around too, just because he's going the curse route. So I want my special attackers around. by Landris. Not sure what kind of go uh not sure what kind of dozo this is but we'll just uh we'll just uh nasty plot and fake out <coughs> it, I find it comical sometimes about people in open team sheets because this is not a tournament. So I mean, you're, you're giving me like 60 seconds to look at your team. And then that's taking away from my time of making plays. Because I'm looking back and forth. Like, nah. Because I believe in like world championships and regionals and all that other stuff. They have a lot of time to actually look at the team. Before they like have... I think they're given like a good amount of time before they lock in what they want. And then they play the battle. So, it, it, unless we're like doing a best of three. Like, it's really not... I, I see no reason to really go that route <clears throat> especially when I'm still processing a lot of things like I am now like still considering this considering that like why do I want that extra why want or why why take on that extra burden while I'm already you know still going through phases of learning right like it's not it's not necessary at least that's how I look at it but hey When I'm ready, I'm ready. But don't use that as an excuse to get whooped. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Cause hey, when I get whooped, hey, I take it. Sure, hey. Mm. The water splashed because it's like way down there. So you see how big the uh, jug is. to the next battle.
so we're we're one in three at the moment I want to play 10 battles actually but I'm gonna take a break after this fifth one and then the next video will, will uh, feature the next five battles so these videos aren't like crazy long and I give myself a break too but I want to do all of this in the same day because I want to get in like at, I want to get in at least 10 reps so 10 battles in the same day practicing these concepts just to kind of make them stick just to kind of really make them impress upon me so that they uh, stick around and I'm able to do these do these analysis analyses a lot more effortless and more efficient So we know Chien Pao is something to be wary of. Again, I have the Terra Water, which is actually pretty good here. Not only on... Well, he has Intimidate. I am about to say Landers, but I'm definitely looking at that Terra Water Goldingo this time, for real. Um, just got to get rid of Rillaboom, or at least get up a Nasty Plot and get Chip on it before I go for an attack. Uh, and we want Flutter Main weakened or I need to keep this healthy because he doesn't guard well against this we know we don't guard it too well against uh, uh we I said that last time I do because I have iron hands and urshifu I said that last time that's not that's not true but my pokemon that I'm trying to use that's very good against him to win I need to use it's uh it needs to be removed so with them having Intimidate in mind, and me needing to remove this. <clears throat> I'm looking to go Urshifu Torn. Now they can go Torn Flutter on me. I'm okay with them going Torn Rilla or whatever, because I'm bringing Iron Hands. And I'm leaving my Flutter main on the bench and Landris. And I'm bringing Godingo. So if they want to bring their flutter main as a lead I can just tear a water um, yeah and what I'll probably end up doing or even tear a steel I'm not tear a water I keep saying that uh, bleak wind and then rain dance aqua jet something like that but just depending on the flutter main too if he did lead it I may I could probably take a moon blast when I tear a that's right, I'm Terra Steel. Guys, ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. I'm, I'm Terra Steel. Yeah, definitely ignore this guy. So my Chien Pao is actually EV to take... I mean to uh, one-shot... Um, Chien Pao with Surging Strikes. But I have to Tailwind. So if he just goes Rillaboom, I'll get... I'll get chip on it, which is valuable. Um, my torn will just have to uh, take a lot, but it, it can't one shot me. I've run that calc before. And looking at the nature of his team, oh, look at I, I made a team very. I have the exact same team. Well, I made a team very similar to this, but it was the regular Arcanine and not this one. Because this team is like mad weak to Iron Hands. But yeah, Surging Strikes and Tailwind. And I like I like the, the team, but it's just very weak to Iron Hands. So that's why on mine I had Arcanine regular instead of Hisuian. Because your defensive core was pretty much Rillaboom. Um... A little bit mark nine, but if you're worried about the torn matchup, then you would have that that arc nine that they have. Goodbye, Chimpao. That Urshifu is not. Whoa, hold on. Wait a second. Oh, life orb, but still, that's banded. That is banded. I'm Terra to live that. I mean, I'm EV to live that. Unless he's like Adamant Max. Let's see.
Guess I'm tripping. Oh yeah, yeah, not Mystic Water. He d he did 40 per hit. That wasn't a roll. I don't. Oh shoot. That bandit. Doing forties. I'm not sure. I have to do the math, but yeah. Run Aqua Jet here. I, I fake out. That's that's right. I fake out. I don't know what kind of torn this is though. But considering he's running the Life Orb Chien Pao. You know it's funny because that's exactly how I was running this team too. But I had I, I put uh, Sash on torn. I wonder if they've played me before. Rocky Helmet. Oh this is going to hurt. It's gonna hurt both of us. Oof, barely lived that. But now we're in Aqua Jet range, so now I'm forced to Aqua Jet too. But I haven't even teared yet, so you guys know what I'm about to do. And then we're like mad defensive, so. And we're faster too. And that is game. But yeah, I, I would have Sash on this because sometimes you would want to go Torn Chien Pao and you don't want your own Torn just going down immediately because of the weakness that of the uh, of the Sword of Ruin weakening your Torn. So I would put Sash there, but I like this team, but it definitely is kind of it's kind of lacking just with the just with the Fire Water Grass Core that we that we have available when trying to run a team like this. It's very limited. But yeah, like I said, there's going to be a part two to this. Um, I'm just going to take a break, you know, go do something to help me kind of ease down, get some other stuff done. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and that it really helps you kind of see that there's, you know, a lot more to think about than just clicking button A, B, and C because you know you feel like it and it's a strong Pokemon and whatnot but yeah it's, it's a lot more to it but yeah we're on our way back up to uh, the top it's going to take a little bit of time and practice but that'll be all from me from now and until next time you guys take care peace